Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is 6-24-2020. It is 9.06 uh, a.m. Eastern, and it is Wednesday. Uh, the major economic releases for today are just one, 10.30 a.m. We have crude oil inventories, and other than that, we are free and clear to steer in either direction. We're fast approaching the window dressing uh, phase of this quarter. We just have a few days left until the end of the month and into the end of the quarter. And in fact, we only have four more days besides today uh, to wrap up the quarter. We can potentially see some possible window dressing effect happening right now. And in fact, we did see some accumulation into the tech stocks again. So money rotated back into the tech stocks. But I'm also seeing right now um, that uh, Dow stocks are sideways towards poking a little bit to the upside. We'll see how the day is going to uh, progress. So just want to welcome everybody, uh, new traders and our veteran traders here. And uh, let's get started with the market today. First off, we uh, open up. Uh, and we're into the negative territory, but not by much. So uh, first off, let's take a look at the leaderboard and laggards for today. So we have the Dow with 159 points to the upside, 0.61%. We have the m and &E S&P with 15 points to the upside, and we have 0.49%. We have NASDAQ that is up uh, 20 points and it is up 0.20%. And we have Russell that is up 11 points and a half, 0.8%. So right off the bat, we can see that we do have a little bit of weaker percentage gain into NASDAQ. However, remember that NASDAQ remains one of the most strongest, uh, strongest index with the bigger robust structure. Uh, also, you can uh, notice that gold uh, had that peak uh, right into uh, that 1800 zone, into the 1796, and it's lacking the volume. I see that there is not a lot of interest in taking gold massively higher. So we do have the bullish above zone into the 1760. We do have support into the 1660 uh, uh, 60, 60 area, including the 1650 support band. Uh, but we're not seeing the bigger velocity that we have been used to on these particular breakouts. And also oil. Oil has had a pullback uh, since the uh, high that was marked in yesterday's trading session. Uh, where it hit $41.63, pulled back to the 20 SMA uh, last night into five o'clock. It tried to rotate into nine o'clock. And again, I have the four hour chart right here. It tried to rotate. We had a swoosh to the upside, triggering a little bit above and then a failure to the pattern. And now we're having the, sa the same uh, rotation that is coming on the four hour. Uh, let's take it to the chart structure. And uh, I am going to uh, switch the screen. So just please give me a heads up, everyone, if you can uh, see the one big screen that I am displaying right now, uh, one big chart that is displayed. All right, we're gonna uh, begin with the Dow. Uh, first of all, the Dow is trading within last week's trading parameters. Last week's high and last week's low. So last week's low, we're into the 24,300 area and the highs are, uh, into the 26, uh, 650 zone. So we're still trading within yet uh, within last week's range. So that means that we're not going to have that progression to the upside or to the downside until we breach the high or the low. So hence the ranging uh, action that we're having and continue to have uh, into the Dow. So Dow is definitely not getting picked up. So that is from the weekly perspective. From the daily perspective, we have been trading again into a range from a range from a range. What happened yesterday, we popped a little bit above uh, the range that uh, we have set. And this is the peakable high that we, uh, that we had in yesterday's trading session that came very early in the morning at eight o'clock and was very promising for a blast higher. We still have the bullish above area that uh, we have plotted and uh, the area was plotted for 
the lot for for the last two to three days. Uh, so we're still seeing the bullish above uh, over 26, 300 zone. So we need to see that 300 to 330 that we have been discussing in yesterday's trading session. And once this is going to break to the upside, we can see some velocity that may take price uh, into the 26, 4, 450. And then we have room back into the prior highs that we have here uh, that was set uh, actually last, not this Tuesday, but prior Tuesday uh, into the 26,658. This is this also marks the weekly high that I mentioned, that uh, weekly high low from um, the weekly chart, obviously. And uh, if we break over this band, then we can expect some uh, much more velocity to the upside. And actually, the velocity is going to take the price uh, to the 27,370. So these are smaller term targets that you see here on the charts. But definitely, we do have a lot of room for uh, the 23,370. Uh, and we also have uh, the 27,500. So these are the bigger uh, bigger target zone. So you see it here, the 27,500. But it is very important to take the price back into this high. So we're quite far away from that point right now. Uh, and until it obviously enters the high velocity zone <clears throat> into the 26,700. Uh, uh, we're also stabilizing on support. This is support that uh, we've had uh, this whole entire week, uh, plus we had it into last week. So this is support from this is support for the last two weeks. Over the last two weeks, we have been pretty much basing into the same uh, into the same support zone. We also had this uh, uh, um, switch to the downside, and this was on Sunday night. And then uh, the price re-entered the pattern very very quickly. So it was just a matter of hours until we uh, we rotated uh, to the upside. So uh, we're seeing uh, the support level right here into the uh, 25, uh, six, uh, uh, 25, 650 zone. Uh, and what I'm noticing right now is that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to do a four hour rotation. This four hour rotation is coming over 25, uh, 870. So if we break above this high, you can see that we had an attempt above this high. Uh, the likelihood of continuation higher. So there are odds, but there are only about 40 to 50% odds for continuation higher. And that is because we have a confluence level into the 900, 900 all the way. So it's going to be for about 60 points. Uh, and that 60 points is of resistance. So definitely we need want to see price uh, move above the 950 to 960 area before we initiate the trade. So even though we have the four hour rotations off the support level, this doesn't mean that this is a classic four hour rotation to the upside. It just means that it is uh, trying to rotate and it's trying to digest this prior high. As long as the support is not gonna be violated throughout the trading session, and I mean the morning session, <clears throat> we can still talk, for, uh, talk about uh, a, uh, an upper directional buy. So that means that we're gonna be looking for the upside uh, in it. Uh, the bias for today's trading session, and also I'm going to show you the hourly chart. Basically, we are still trading into an uptrend. So we are coming, let me just show you the daily chart. We're coming from a low that was registered uh, on March 23rd. And since then, we have been trading in an uptrend. So let me show you the last uh, cluster that we have going on here. So we had a high. We came back. This high is higher than the prior high. And we have a congestion right into this 200 SMA, and that is what is preventing price from accelerating higher. And this is at the 300. So 300 level is a high level, that bullish above level, that purple line is definitely the line of the sand that differentiates the bulls from the bears. We definitely need to see a print above that area in order for us to be bullish on the trading session today. Because the price is comprised between uh, between support, which is into the 25 200 level. So we have support into the 600, and then we have support in 200, and we're balancing into the structure right here, which, by the way, is still very much bullish uh, looking at the daily structure. Uh, we're going to have a moderately bullish bias, but we're going to have to be very careful about our entries because our entries uh, need to be, the, the high velocity trades are going to uh, uh, kick in only 
uh, if the price is going to reach the 26,300 and up and higher, obviously. So I'm going to go back to the hourly chart and all right. So we're going to be waiting patiently to see how the market is going to uh, digest and whole, this whole entire uh, scenario and this whole entire range that we have to deal with throughout the trading session today. And we dealt with for the last week and a half. All right. So let's uh, continue with the m and &E S&P. And uh, the m and &E S&P, the support, uh, we have, again, the 200 SMA support, which is uh, at the 200 SMA. Uh, we also have a major support level from uh, the range bound action into the 60s. And we also have another support from the low that was created on Sunday night and from which the price rotated and uh, grinded back into the highs. So you could see here that we have this, uh, lot, we have had this line in the sand, the bullish above for the last not only one, two, three uh, uh, peaks into the high. So again, it is uh, this range has continued for the whole entire week and a half. Uh, the one common denominator that the S&P has with the Dow is that we have a high and the high is 31, uh, 3156. So we definitely need, that is the high velocity. You can see it right here, it's marked. And we also have a low of 2923. 2923 is bearish, okay? So 29, uh, actually 2927 to 2923, this is going to be bearish. So I'm going to uh, do a little edit here and I'm gonna say bearish below, uh, but because that is going to let the price escape to the downside. So I'm gonna make it pop up a little bit here. So I'm gonna put a dotted line. All right, here we go. Uh, so this is gonna be the bearish below area. If we break below this zone, then we're gonna be entering that stage where we are going to be looking for pullback sales rather than anything else. Uh, so we're seeing the same four hour attempt at a rotation, but you can see the resistance bands. Uh, we need to clear and we need to close this uh, within these, uh, within this four hour. And let me remind you, this candle is going to wrap up. It has a long time ahead of it. It's going to wrap up at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so we need to see the close above 3110 to regain the bullish momentum. Other than that, we're going to be totally sideways throughout the trading session today. Uh, so let's go back to the one hour chart and, uh, <clears throat> obviously the game plan and the targets for the m and &E SMP are going to be bullish above the 3150. I would also be looking for the 3120 level that 3120 would confirm the elimination <clears throat> of resistance from the four hour charts. And, uh, over this area, I'm going to be cautiously bullish, moderately bullish, uh, progressing into the 3140 level. And then over this level, if we get over this level, this is going to be bullish above with targets into the 31, uh, 3180, 3200, 3220 zone. Uh, let's continue with Russell. And uh, these are the most difficult patterns that uh, we have. Uh, so I'm going to signal the fact that we are already trading again into a weekly range. That means that uh, the price needs to escape 1480 in order to create the velocity. You have the uh, markings right here. So we need to print this, uh, uh, this number in order to create the velocity above. And obviously, if we start trading below 1316, which is a little bit lower, uh, 1316 is last week's low. Um, and if we trade below that, this is, this is kind of like the area right here into the, uh, into the 16, uh, then, th and it's also last week's low. Yeah. That I mentioned. Um, and, uh, this is going to be the bearish, uh, the bearish side. Uh, I'm not completely bearish yet, even though, uh, Ru Russell has, uh, had the tendency to be a little bit weaker, but we did have a very nice pattern. So look at the symmetry. We had upside, pulled back, upside, pulled back, upside again, upside again, very shallow pull back, upside again, then pull back. So we're still respecting the 50 SMA. The price is still trading above and we're seeing the same cluster here. So the price really needs to digest this massive move that it just executed. All right, let's continue with NASDAQ and NASDAQ, of course, the powerhouse and uh, all the money rotating into the tech sector once again. And this is a characteristic of window dressing. Of course, uh, uh, mutual funds and portfolio managers, hedge funds are going to start dressing up their portfolio for their clients. They want to look smart. So they are um, jumping into high flying stocks. They're jumping into the apples. They're jumping into 
uh, the, um, the Facebooks and, and um, uh, Netflix, et cetera, Microsoft, what have you, Google and Amazon, et cetera. So these are the powerhouses that push the NASDAQ higher. So what do we have going on into, uh, into NASDAQ? Obviously a super strong trend. And we yesterday we just marked a new fresh high that I talked about in yesterday's trading session and I, uh, we gave it a projection target of 10,300. The price is still trading above the 10 exponential moving average, which is a powerhouse. Uh, the hourly chart, again, is the one that is very conducive to continue higher, but we need to see a close above uh, 200 again. So these are the same, pretty much the same parameters that we had for yesterday's trading session. So we need to see 10,200 and two, over 200. So it's gonna be over 200. It'll be determined by price action once we open and once we see how the price is reacting. So remember the clues are coming from price and price action and from patterns. <clears throat> so right now it is still very early to see what the trigger price may be. It looks like it wants to be anywhere between 203 and 207. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait on price action to see how it lines up after the open. Uh, also, like I said, yesterday we had a brand new high. Today we have a little bit of a lower high, but we have a really flat support zone into, uh, into the 83 zone. We're also trying to curl back up and we're trying to respect this uh, 50 SMA because you see every single time it managed to trade into this 50 SMA, it tried to coil around it and snap back up. So this was the case here where it consolidated for a, very, for a very long time. And this was at the 10,000 level, there's no surprise. Uh, it was coiling around the whole number and it managed to escape higher. It escaped into a um, uh, hundred, it pulled back because price, once the price is reaching all of these catalyst uh, zones on the chart, it produces a higher gyration. It pulled back into the same support zone that was revisited uh, two days before, and this happened on Sunday. This was a revisit into Wednesday, and then we finally uh, had a really nice transition higher. We talked about it uh, in the, yesterday's trading session, and the common denominator was the range. We had ranges right before the open that broke out, continued into the prior high, continued into the overnight, uh, continued actually in the overnight trading session. Uh, pull back, and this is a tape bomb. It came with the news. It was Navarro popped down, uh, and then we have the range bound uh, into the London session with the pop uh, again at the London session. And of course, after this pop into the London session, we have uh, we had the same range bound price action. So we had a symmetry here. Uh, we had the symmetry, and this was the Sunday night symmetry. We had the Monday. Uh, the Tuesday, I'm sorry, the Tuesday, this was the Monday symmetry, this was the Tuesday symmetry range, uh, and we also had a same symmetry range within the overnight trading session uh, before the market opened uh, yesterday, and yesterday we did uh, have the trade uh, that we called over 10,200. Uh, we did have uh, shallow support into the 150, and this is the support that we used in yesterday's trading session. And uh, so far, this level is going to be a coil around, uh, coil around area. We still have support, like I said, into uh, the alternate support is into the 176, and we have a sh very shallow uh, support into the 100 zone. So again, these are, and again, from 100 to 700 and here, this is going to be all a support bet. They're all lining up in the same manner. So we also have the four hour rotation. So if I were to go for a long today, still going to be NASDAQ because you have to trade what is in play on that specific day. We're gonna have to evaluate how the NASDAQ stocks are trading at the open before we take any decision. Uh, but more so, I love the bottoming tail effect off the 20 SMA, nice hammer. So we can uh, talk about a continuation higher if we, if we actually trade above uh, between 184 and 200, like I said, the area will be determined at the open, more likely into the 200 area, so we can escape outside of those uh, MAs that are present on our hourly charts. Uh, gold, I'm going to bring in very briefly here. Uh, gold uh, is uh, on the four hour, is pulling back into the 20 SMA. Uh, like I said, I would have liked a much better velocity for it to uh, break above the 1800 before it pulls back. But hey, we're going to take exactly what the market has given us. So we're looking for a pullback into the 1770 to 1760 before we uh, want to rotate and continue uh, continue higher. 
this trade may be executed on the four hour. So I'm gonna leave the four hour on our watch list and we're gonna continue to monitor uh, for a quick swing. Perhaps this is gonna be a one day swing or somewhere one to three day swing. So it's gonna be a very short term swing in gold, but it's not lining up. So we definitely need, uh, this trade is gonna probably line up in the PM session going into the overnight trading session. So keep an eye on that. Uh, if, uh, if you wanna watch gold, uh, you wanna see uh, the 20 SMA hold into this area or the uh, 1760. And if this is something that interests you, you're going to watch for a four hour rotation. This is gonna be your trade. You're gonna look for a target back into this high of almost 1800. You're only gonna get it at a four hour rotation. And remember, this can be a trade for those of you that are trading in the overnight trading session, that are trading outside of the New York trading session hours and also out in the evening hours and so on. Uh, oil, not gonna uh, comment much uh, on oil because we have uh, oil inventory numbers in uh, just uh, uh, in just a few moments, um, um, just a few uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, but definitely, it is uh, it is uh, bullish. Um, it is uh, trading off of uh, the weekly structure. Like I said here, this is uh, a big account sort of play because it has a really wide. Uh, risk level. Uh, we have uh, plenty of support into the $34 and we also have a nice nod in confluence area here. Uh, the price has filled the gap and this is nothing else but a bull sandwich that can explode uh, back into the 50 SMA. You can see that the more the price is going to stabilize into this area, this 50 SMA is going to start sloping a little bit. So uh, from a profit target of about $50, now we're uh, back into the $46. So it was cut by about, well, the profit target was cut by about $4 here. Uh, just want to bring uh, to our attention ZB today. ZB may be in play throughout the trading session today. Uh, we can potentially expect a move uh, if we're gonna, going to get a slope in the futures indices. Uh, we could possibly expect somewhat of an explosive move uh, coming into bonds. Uh, this is the weekly structure and we're still trading uh, range bound within last week's low, uh, high and low. The daily chart is again, very, very choppy. Uh, the four hour chart is also uh, trying to stabilize and I'm seeing this sandwich that can potentially line up. I would be very, very interested to see where this four hour is going to close. If it's going to close above the 177, we may potentially see uh, the bonds that may be in play uh, right now. Okay, so we have a couple of seconds to uh, 9.30. I'm gonna switch the screen and we're gonna start actively watching some levels for today. So right now we don't have, uh, I'm gonna switch it to the four, uh, from the four hour to the five minute chart. And we're gonna start actively watching for some trades. Uh, I'm going to take your questions only after the first hour. So after uh, 10.30, I'm gonna take your questions. Remember, we focus our undivided attention. It's gonna go into trading. Uh, so uh, CL and gold remain on the four hour watches and also bonds are going to be on our watch today. Uh, just give me a quick heads up. Let me know if you guys uh, are seeing the uh, six charts displayed right now. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, hold on a second. I'm having some issues here with um, <clears throat> I'll display the charts in just a sec. I'm just doing a resetting because the projector just collapsed.
All right, just give me a heads up right now, guys, if you can see these, uh, these screens. Okay, the focus is gonna be NASDAQ. There is some divergency as well in NASDAQ, but we just got our four hour rotation. Remember for this trade, we're gonna be using half the size or a quarter of the size or a third of the size. Uh, the stop is going to be wide and we may start working out this trade. So start with half the size, a quarter of the size. The stop for this trade is going to be under 100. I don't have the entry just yet. We may potentially have um, another entry that may be into the 150. Please do not use it until I tell you so. Uh, the Dow, the S&P and Russell are having a very hard time. Dow is divergent. This may create um, problems for NASDAQ. Even though NASDAQ is strong, this is going to dim that progression. We have the same open that we had in yesterday's trading session into the 150 to 160. YM has just switched to the downside, has violated the recent pivot that has just formed right before the open. This is not a good sign. Uh, NASDAQ is into the five minute 200 SMA. Oil will become on focus after the 1030 inventories. The Dow stocks that I'm looking at them right now. So uh, there is a lot of weakness in IBM violating the prior support. So it looks like it wants to slide lower and being a component of um, of the Dow, this is not going to be uh, bullish. Uh, also, Boeing holding on to the 20 SMA, uh, Disney, these are big components, uh, range bound, violated yesterday's low, but it's still into a very bullish range onto the daily. Uh, Walmart back revisiting the 20 SMA, uh, range bound, UNH, again, UNH, uh, UNH and uh, Home Depot, they are in range bound, uh, range bound patterns. <clears throat> they look very bullish because they are um, trading into that strong uptrend. Um, also, Nike uh, yesterday gapped up, still holding the gap up support. A uh, Costco flatline along with Walmart, like I said earlier. Uh, here's NASDAQ into that 200 zone, 196 actually. This is going to be extremely aggressive, guys. Very, very aggressive. It's going to come very quickly. We're into that 200, 202 zone. We're getting five minute high lows. Russell is very messy. I would stay away from Russell. Um, 
a little bit of velocity uh, into YMA uh, come in over 804. If it prints 804, it's going to go to um, 825. Here it is. We're having NASDAQ as well progression. I didn't want to take the four hour rotation just right off the bat because I didn't have the confirmation from the Dow and from the mini SP. Uh, because there was uh, the trigger point was from uh, 85 all the way to 206. It's trading into the 206 right now. Remember that we do not have a lot of catalysts other than window dressing that is potentially that can potentially move the market into the next uh, four trading days. Nice rip in NASDAQ to the upside from the open. And I wish I would have, um, I would have, I, I, you know what, the thing is, the thing with NASDAQ, you know, it had a really nice setup pattern. I'm going to show you earlier and it's moving from this congestion right here. So it was at seven o'clock. I wasn't up at seven o'clock, <clears throat> but this, uh, this was the entry right here. Uh, 180, 180 was the entry and the stop was 120. But that happened uh, way earlier, way early. Seven o'clock it happened. And I don't often trade, um, you know, uh, before the market opens. Sometimes I do my own trades and I like to keep a swing on, but um, not today. Like I said, I'm still, you know, I'm still not feeling 100%, so. All right, back into, uh, we're getting close to that 945 zone. All right, so uh, NASDAQ is fighting that 206 uh, cluster. Uh, the thing with NASDAQ is that it has been uh, trading uh, for the last four hours and trending to the upside for the last four hours. And it's so hard to uh, start accumulating now and jumping in a trade right now, which I am totally against. So not chasing anything, but I was hoping that it can possibly provide a better type of day trade setup other than the four hour, because let's face it, the four hour, it can only be used for swings. It's 
not for day trades. That one hour with gorgeous was just pure, pure, beautiful inside bar from that hammer candle. It was just, just perfect. Russell again is acting up and it, you can see that it is pushing a little bit to the downside, has these topping tails. Wow, NASDAQ releasing again. Two twenty, man, this was our target, uh, targeted one from yesterday. Trading off the same parameters, same risk level, but the problem with uh, today's trading session is that it violated that one hundred and fifty support, and it came into that one hundred. So we did not like that. We did not like the risk associated with the straight. Super, super high. Let's take it back to the five minute. Okay, a little bit of exhaustion and divergence into the 220 right now. Our bullish above levels are way over here. So that, uh, That's a bit farther. However, we do have another level. That is the 3110. Gonna switch to the 15 minute here. Uh, if SMP is gonna break below um, 94, 93, we're gonna go back into the chop zone. If uh, the Dow is gonna break below, well, this is the area right here, uh, 720. If it breaks below 720, it's gonna enter the chop zone. Uh, here's the divergency kicking in in that stock, uh, into that 220 zone. And obviously, if Russell is gonna break below uh, 1415, it's gonna get back into the chop zone, back into that wider range that uh, has been going on for the last week and a half. So my, my favorite index for today is obviously NASDAQ because NASDAQ uh, is, uh, let's go to the 15 minute here. Uh, NASDAQ is very, very strong. However, it's the most extended. Let me switch back to the Dow. And I, I really don't want to hop into something like the Dow. S&P was garbage yesterday, it was range bound. Um, if you guys took the trade that I suggested yesterday um, uh, for, um, and this is the trade that I suggested in uh, yesterday's trading session, let me just go back to um, smaller charts here. Okay, so remember we talked about uh, uh, when, uh, when we wrapped up the session, uh, we mentioned that you can potentially have that trade over, uh, over 30, uh, 35 going close to the 40 level, uh, going going to the 40 and 45 level. So you just hit it right here, and you could have wrapped this up uh, later in the afternoon. But this this was all the trade that we had, and then we had the slope here, uh, slope of the pattern, and we have high, lower high, lower high. So you see a little bit of divergence here. Uh, we really need to pick it up. I mean, th this is this does not promote higher prices. The S and P does not promote higher prices. Uh, Nasdaq does. Uh, Russell does not promote higher prices, and YM does not promote higher prices. So we're going to be looking right now to see what's going on. Uh, also, if we are going to have a short, oh, they're not lining up for shorts either. It's one of those uh, chop fest type of days when they're not lining up for the shorts, they're not lining up for the longs. 
And like I said, we're having this bullish above area all the way into the 3145. We have the bullish above area into the 26. This is going to be like, okay, uh, everything aside, we're just going to look for pullback buys. But right now we're into the chop zone. We're into that. Uh, for the last week and a half, we have been into the chop zone. And remember what was the common denominator that, uh, you know, throughout these weeks is that we pretty much had, um, we pretty much had patterns uh, that were, lining up later in the day. All right, so we're going um, on a rotation to the downside here. So we're doing the doji low. However, remember, there's still a lot of support here. So I don't trust this uh, break to the downside just yet. But we're looking more and more bearish. S&P has uh, rotated on the hourly. So again, this is going to be a top watch. However, still uh, tons of support into the 88 and 85, but it looks more and more of a short than anything else. Yeah, slippage, totally very whippy market. We have this. We've got this. We've got this. S&P right now, four hours trading on the 20 SMA. That's why I'm not very a big fan right now of shorting because the price is trading in between. And I want to show you guys so you understand why I'm not, you know, uh, you know overly bullish or bearish at this point because we were trying to uh, perform this uh, four hour rotation. However, the price got stuck into the 20 SMA and we have uh, the 50 SMA right here. So it's, it's just stuck in there, just squished in between these moving averages. And you know what this happens, being an algo rich zone, they're popping it up at, or they're dragging it down right here. And uh, into the Dow on the four hour, all right, anytime, sink or swim. You see that you have, uh, you could potentially have more velocity to the downside, but you do have the support here into uh, the uh, into the 26, 670 uh, level. So I would be more bearish below this zone, but I would like to see it with the much less risk than what we're having right now. Okay, so remember, we are trading into the chop zone. Uh, we look, we have to look for very clean, clear elements that are lining up. And uh, this would have been a very aggressive sell, by the way, on the 15, because this is what I was looking at, the 15-minute high-low, and I was looking for a short below this area, because like I said, if the Dow is going to break below 20, it's going to start revisiting the 60s. So I was looking at these 15 minutes. Now we're going to go back to the five-minute, because we need to see some uh, either a continuation or let's see what we have going on. And back to square one in the NASDAQ, you can see it right here. Uh, back to where we opened into the 150 at the New York trading session. Again, a little bit choppier, very, very, very choppy. Okay, so we have to have the patience to wait a little bit. Okay, uh, let me check out GC on the one hour. Hmm, interesting. 
<laughs> interesting, interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we have to revisit it at the top of the hour. I would be much more um, inclined in uh, getting it uh, over the four hour rotation into one o'clock or so, or after one o'clock. Oh yeah, I I think slippage. You you're uh you have the right idea. Today would be a good day to short some stocks. CCL. Oh CCL, nice. CCL has room to fifteen dollars and seventy cents. Yeah, all the airlines. Uh, the VIX one hour rotation. The VIX are trading right into support on the 20 SMA, getting a little bit of a lift here. Uh, I don't have any outlets on and I'm not getting any kind of news. So I don't know if this is news related or, you know, I don't know if this is a tape bomb or a release back into the bottom of the range for price. And the VIX are so choppy. The VIX potentially long All right, we're back into support. Not taking any action right now. That's what I'm thinking. All right, we're seeing a little bit of a bounce. We're, we're trading a range bounce, so I don't know why we had this acceleration. Again, we don't need for the reason, but it would be nice to know um, if it was a tape bump or not. I'm not seeing anything.
I think that we're going to accelerate lower. Let's see if one hour. The one hour is anchored uh, into the 200 SMA right here into the mini SMP, and that's why it's stalling here for just a bit. Let's see the one hour. Very messy price action, so I'm just staying away from it right now. I don't have any entries for shorts or anything else. I'm look. I'm keep on looking up the VIX, and I think that the VIX can potentially move to the upside. Um, 35, 36, 33. 33, 30, I would say 35, 35 for the trigger. Let's see if we Okay, for those of you that are in the swing program, uh, this is the trade. Into the VIX. Uh, T2, thanks so much. So it's China and India, China looking hawkish, Apple down and Ford cut up um, in goods and port. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. All right, so 36.35, 34.30 is going to be the stop. And uh, we're gonna look for 37.38. 30, uh, if we break above 38, this is going to be straight to 40 and perhaps into the 40, 30 or so. Uh, we'll decide it as it trades. Okay, top of the hour, 10 o'clock. So far we have the 10 o'clock high and low. Uh, this is the hourly high uh, and this is the hourly low. And notice that we are trading in the lower band, <clears throat> lower band of support. Let me remind you the VIX trade is not in the futures VIX, okay? It's VXX. It's not for slash VX. Hmm. Let's see how we digest these uh, these areas. And by the way, in the VIX, it's gonna be a four hour rotation.
And we're in. We're into the VIX. NASDAQ still trading within yesterday's range. The S&P still trading within yesterday's range, the danger zone and S&P where it can uh, progress much further lower is going to be that 60 support right here. If we trade below that, we have room back into the 3020 and back into 3000. This is the first time that we're seeing a much more accelerated move to the downside. <clears throat> more than we had on the 19th. No entries. No entries. Man, that, that doji high low in S&P was it under that 90. But we have so much support. Okay, let me do a quick round of uh, monitoring on multiple time frames. I am not jumping in anything. I'm just looking and watching and seeing if there uh, can potentially be an opportunity for a setup or seeing Russell that is trying to rotate a bit on the five minute. Bonds are perking up. They're back into that. <clears throat> Remember I mentioned the 177.10? Coming back as the indices are bouncing. Still no trades yet. The S&P tapped into support, still trading below the 200 SMA.
Yeah, Linda, I don't really understand either, you know, how the link can work for some uh, and for some, uh, you know, it doesn't work and it's the same link. Uh, BMA, uh, B mad trading. Um, no, no. VXX is a swing trade. It's not a day trade and it's VXX. It's not VIX. It's VXX and it's a swing trade. It's not a day trade. It's not related to uh, futures trading. I just mentioned it in here because a lot of our members, and in fact, if you're a permanent member of the trading room, you are going to have access to the swing trading uh, alerts um, all the way into September 1st. That's gonna be complimentary. Uh, but it is as part of the swing program. Stock swing program. All right, uh, even uh, here's the thing with NASDAQ. NASDAQ still holding strong here into support. You see how it's bouncing off of that support zone? That's the five minute. Here's gonna be the clue, and this is gonna be the clue here. I would like to see a bounce. I, the bounce, I would like to see it, and this is what I would like. Okay, so technically speaking, I'd like to see a bounce in NASDAQ into uh, 138, and then a rotation to the, down, uh, to the downside. Okay, a rotation to the downside. And as far as bonds go, bonds are perky, interesting to me right now. Um, very slow, very slow start to bonds. But of course they do move kind of slow. So uh, let's go back to NASDAQ. I still don't have my pick. So if we're going to short something, most likely we're going to look at uh, the Dow, or the m and &E SMP, or even Russell, and to the long side, we're still going to keep uh, um, NASDAQ on the, back bur uh, on the back burner because NASDAQ still has a very robust structure. All right, CB uh, trying to rotate on the two-minute. Okay, so ZB has resistance into 177.13. And it has uh, temporary support into 177.04. And if it breaks over this uh, 14, it can go to 20. So it has room from 14 to 20 from 177.14 to 177.20. But it's going to be the most difficult trade. It's not gonna be the easy trade. I don't wanna do these rotations to the upside and I don't wanna go long on these rotations here. And you know how I love to catch these um, longs. I do not feel confident, and that's because the mini SMP, that 3080 zone, it's pretty decisive. I'm looking at the SMP that is still holding the 3080. The futures violated the 3080. I'm just going to sit and wait, not going to do anything. SMP is really trying to do that temporary bottom um, on the one and two minute forming a doji on the 15. We have three minutes into 10, 15. Remember 10.30 is our prime time trigger time. Let's see, we have anything lined up and don't forget about the oil numbers. Oil numbers are gonna have a say uh, because uh, in, into the mini SMP and they're coming in at 10.30.
as a short squeeze from this down momentum, um, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at 3080. Stop under 3070. And this is going to be a one to one R. And the target is going to be into 3090. And in the Dow, in the Dow, look for the 15 minute rotation high low as well. Let me check NASDAQ, which is the strongest one. Oh, don't, don't move, don't move, NASDAQ. All right, we have two more minutes, two more minutes. And we're seeing like a very strong hammer candle. See, NASDAQ is already, uh, NASDAQ is going to start. We have two more minutes left. We can't take any action into it. Uh, the support zone is gonna be under 70. So that means that that is, you, that is where your stop is gonna have to be. And then the 15 minute rotation, we're not gonna get it because we can't get it. We have two more minutes and the price needs to come down a little bit, at least into the 106, 108. Uh, the high right now is 15.25. So a trigger into 16. So we could have, what we're looking at is a trigger into 16 and a stop under 70. So we're looking at 116 by 70. We're looking at 116 by 70, but the trigger price will be dictated in about 30 seconds. Uh, Craig, I could do that after we're done trading. All right, so we're looking still 116 by 70. And it, we're gonna have a target into uh, 140. 140, 145, 140, 145. 116 by 70, guys. 116 by 70 now. 116 by 70 NASDAQ long. Okay, no trigger yet. It's 116 by 70. 116 by 70, and we're going to look for a target uh, into one, let's say 140. I'll guide you all the way there. 135 to 140, 135, 130 to 140, actually. And this is the strongest, okay have my order placed. Um, let's switch to the 15 here. All right, and let me give you an idea for those of you that only like to trade the M&E SMP. The M&E SMP triggers can be a 3080 by, 30, uh, by under 3069. So that would be your triggers, okay? So no triggers yet. Do not attempt to jump into trades. There is a reason why I'm watching the timing and I'm watching the parameters of the trade. And when we call the entries and the stops, these need to be respected. If you don't respect them, then that's your trade and you manage it the way you do. Okay, so in mini S&P, just as an idea, you need to see it over 80. You need to see it over 80 in order to get in. You wanna see it 30, 80 or 30, 80, 25, 30, 80, 50. And then you could possibly have a little short squeeze, but it's not as favorable as, as NASDAQ. Okay, so I'm also looking for some short opportunities as well. So in case we do not get a trigger in NASDAQ for the long, All right, what I would be looking for is to see from this really shallow uh, low high 
a segment, let's say on a two minute low high segment, if we get a shallow pullback and a rotation off of this point, that may be the launch pad for that 30 target that I mentioned. If not, we're going to be looking for more of a downside, but the downside has to be way below this, uh, this 74, 75 area. And that's going to come with the risk above this pivot high. So most likely it's going to be uh, that 116 zone. Okay, for like I said, RT, let's let's uh, let me look at RTY here for a possible short. We're gonna do also RTY short. We're gonna see which one triggers. The short is going to be under 1400 and the stop is going to be 1410. The target is going to be 1390 and then we have 1385 and then we have uh, 1383. All right, we're positioned for both cases. All right, now we sit back and relax. Chill time, we have our trades. Ten twenty. So we have one short and one long. Hey, Daryl, of course. Keeping an eye on everything. <laughs> All right, let's see who, um, what's gonna be the next index that is going to trigger, okay? Is it gonna be NASDAQ for long or is it gonna be Russell for short? They're really trying to consolidate off of this bottom here. And remember what I said, you know, from the two minute segment that we have the low high and if we're gonna get a pullback and a curl, but here we had quite a velocity to the downside. So we had this tail. So again, if we see it again over this 16, this may have a little bit of pressure to the upside. <clears throat> and uh, uh, and like I said, with uh, with um, uh, look at these hammer candles right here. Okay, so if you want to trade the mini S and P, it's over thirty eighty. I'm not going to type it in the room. Thirty eighty. You know who you are if you're trading the mini S and P. Thirty eighty for the uh, for the long, and your stop is under sixty nine. Under sixty nine. So that means that you don't put it at sixty nine. You put it way under. Just give it a few ticks or a point. With this velocity, I, I would I would actually put it right here into 65 or so, 66. I, I don't want to get tapped into. All right. So obviously, if we trigger long in NASDAQ, we're going to be canceling Russell.
Let's put what I am into the 15 minute segment as well. This time frame. See, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Dow. So Dow, you see that it's a little weaker. It has tested support. This whole entire zone is a support level, right? Right from the 50 and into the 60 zone. Bottoming tells, this is what I like. This is the temporary bottom effect. Uh, for those of you that like to trade Dow, even though you know, I'm not a big fan of it, um, if it trades over 652, uh, the stop is 560, and you're going to look for a target into 700 and about 710 or so, maybe 710, 715. This, uh, this, would, be your, uh, this would be your trigger. Uh, so, so let's check out uh, the 15 in S&P. 15 and S&P solid bar. Uh, over 09, 1409, over 14. But see, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of room to run to the upside. Russell is not a good candidate for the long. What I'm afraid that it may happen here is that we may get, we may get a rotation to the upside and then swish back down. But hey, it's a chance that I'm willing to take. Remember, please allocate half of the risk for every single trade that we're uh, dealing with right now, especially now that we're trading in this range bound uh, market uh, for the last week and a half. Half the risk, double the stop. Half the risk, double the stop. Why I'm rotating, five minute, kicked in. NQ taking its time. You need to see it into 16. Sixteen is my entry. Trying to work out a little sandwich on the five minute. All right, cancel Russell. And uh, we are officially in into NASDAQ long. The trade has triggered at 116. Five minute has topped into the 120 zone. 120 zone uh, is uh, resistance. This is the first area of resistance. If we manage to close the five minute candle above uh, 23, 24, then we could possibly look for a progression higher back into the 130 and 140. So uh, the first target is 130. The second target is 140. There is another target into 145, but we're going to discuss that as we, uh, as the trade progresses. We need to see it. Okay. We need to see a print over 23, 25. Here it is. 24. Good action. 25. Uh, Evard, the trade has triggered already and we're in. It is a swing. Yep. It's not a day trade. All right, so we tapped into that 25 and then we're pulling back a little bit right now. We have two and a half minutes into this five minute candle close. 
Let's see if this is gonna work out. Also three minutes into prime time trigger time. We may have a 30 minute rotation into 1030. So that's what I'm looking for. If into the next two minutes, we manage to trade above the 30 minute high, that may issue a continuation higher, perhaps into the 150 that can project the price into the 150. Here's the 30 minute, let me show you what I'm looking at. 30 minute, see the 30 minute off the 200 SMA? All right, so we're, we're trying to take out this high right here, the, the can, this candle's high. So we wanna see it over, uh, over 125 in about one minute, one minute and 10 seconds. We wanna see it, uh, we wanna see it coil strong into this 120 zone until then. We have 30 seconds into 1030 prime time trigger time, and this is gonna be a 30 minute rotation off of that time. And Craig, I have not forgotten, I'm going to explain the trigger time uh, after we wrap up this trade. So, so important to have the trades that are lining up into the trigger time. Okay, it is 1030. It is officially prime time trigger time and we need to see a trigger off. You guessed it. It's going to be that 2675 right now. So we need to see it over 27. We need to see a print of 27. Okay, so what we need right now is a print of 27. We're going to go back to the 15 minute. If we see that print of 27 coming in, we're set. And we're gonna issue continuation. Okay, Craig, no worries. I'm gonna explain the whole concept after we're done this trade. Uh oh. The moment, that tense moment in time. Remember, we need to see a print, 27. Once we get that 27, we have that almost guaranteed that we're gonna move higher. If we don't see the 27, then we have to wait, have the, uh, have the stop in place. And we have Russell still on the back burner. Okay, Russell is still on the back burner. Get ready with it. We may reinitiate it in case uh, the Dow trade, uh, the, the NASDAQ trade is gonna fail. Okay, so we have it on the back burner.
Reactivate wrestle trade. It's posted above. I'm not going to retype it. Under 1400 by 1410, target 1390, 1385, 1382. Have it activated. All right. Put your limit orders in. Have a heart stop in. Have a heart stop in, guys. So Russell is under 1400 for the entry. The stop is the stop is going to be over 1410. Okay? The stop is going to be for over 1410. In fact, let's give it a little bit of room and make it uh make it 12. Make it 12. Um, and we're going to have targets into 1390, 1385, 1382, 1380. Okay, and then NASDAQ, have a hard stop in NASDAQ. And until then, we just watch the trades trade. Yeah, Steve, so you got that? Uh, Predom. We don't know if it's going to violate yesterday's low. It's going to go down. See that doji on the daily? Bear flag on the five minute. Yes, I'm long NASDAQ, I'm long NASDAQ and the hard stop. Long NASDAQ 116 by 70, target 140, 131, uh, 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 target 140, so it's between 130 and 140 with projection into 150. And we do, are you, we are using hard stops. And we also have Russell Short under 1400 with the stop 1412. Okay, here it is. And Russell has triggered. We are short in Russell. We are short in Russell. This is the stop. 11.5. And we are out of NASDAQ. NASDAQ has stopped. And we are short Russell. This is the first short that we've 
God, actually, in a very long time. Wow, I think in like two months. Three months? Are you kidding me? Three? <laughs> oh my goodness. Four months, maybe the first short. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Totally slippage. Uh, 1400, Walter, 1400. Short Russell at 1400. The stop is <coughs> 1411 around this area. I don't want to kick it in right at 1410. And, um, uh, like I said, we have targets into the 1390, 1385, 1382, and actually 1380. Uh, one hour rotation up in gold. I'm just going to focus on this. Not going to go ahead with other other trades here. This can potentially develop in Russell for uh for a swing to the short side. Yes, first target is into the 90s. 10 points from the entry. VXX is back up there into that trigger point. VXX right now needs to trade above uh, 36.5. In fact, 0. 0.60 in order to start accelerating to the 37 zone. So we're gonna be looking for an ultimate target right here into the 80s. This may take a little bit of time. Uh, the Dow is releasing a little bit more pressure. Um, the S&P is right on support.
And we did have the oil inventory numbers about 15 minutes ago. And we have, uh, after the four hour rotation that I mentioned that is trading right into resistance uh, all the way into the 4020, it rotated and it's continuing to the downside. All right, so now it is important for price. Uh, if, because we are short in Russell, we need to see the price accelerate below 95. So we need to see issue a continuation. And the market is a little heavier right now because um, some new numbers, um, some new COVID numbers came out. So there is um, new uh, COVID-19 fears. Uh, yeah, that, that is also gonna be used. That is also going to be used if we see it uh, trend lower. But we do have, and this, this is the uh, price support into the Very slow price action, no momentum. In fact, zero momentum at this point. Uh, if S&P is going to unleash a little bit of pressure to the downside, it needs to trade below 3060, and we need to get uh, the Dow under 25500. Obviously, NASDAQ, we need to see it over 60, uh, under 60, I'm sorry. We need to see, so under these numbers, so once again, NASDAQ, we need to see it under 60. Uh, S&P, we, we need to see it again under 60, and we need to see the Dow under 500 for a Russell to start accelerating lower. Don't forget that Russell still has a relative weakness. And we need 95 in Russell.
<clears throat> Gold is higher. Let's go back to the four hour. Uh, guys, for tomorrow, please try to log in a little bit earlier and see if you could get into the room and notify me by 8.45 a.m. Eastern because it's going to be very hard uh, to keep tap on the emails once we get started the trading session. And I'm not going to verify the emails, uh, especially into 9.30 as we're focused on trading. Now we know that, you know, typically, you know, when the first uh, news hits uh, the wire into coronavirus, you know, in regards to coronavirus, there's usually, you know, either a pop or a drop in the market. Uh, so it's, and, and then it just fades out. So we're gonna have to wait and see how uh, the market is gonna digest this, uh, uh, this information right now. The market doesn't seem too worried at this point uh, for, um, uh, for the increase in the COVID numbers. It already had its first initial reaction, and right now it's just, you know, trying to stabilize. We'll see. Uh, JC, oil, no action. It's just coming off, it's still very early, it had uh, the inventory numbers at 10.30. I'm not gonna touch it at least into the top of the hour and then we're gonna evaluate it. Weak oil, it means that the market is gonna start pushing lower. So we have our, uh, we have our 500 that is being violated in YM, which is good. Uh, we have uh, NASDAQ that is violating the 60 as well and S&P that is trying to violate that 60. So we need to see uh, we need to see 95, and if we see 95, we're going to start pushing towards uh, towards 1390 and Russell.
we really need to uh, we really need to punch below that uh, below that low into the 95. We had a 95.4. If oil continues to, um, well, see, here's the thing, you know, oil is uh, right now uh, into the 50 SMA. So this may slow down the momentum a little bit because it's gonna try to anchor before its next decision. It's gonna try to uh, determine uh, whether it's gonna hold into that area, if it's gonna rotate on a smaller time frame from that point on. Uh, and um, uh, these, are, uh, these are the oil inventory number bars. Uh, into the 15 minute. Also, the one hour is anchored into the 200 SMA, and that's why we're having the stall here. So it's likely that we're going to have a little bit of rotation if the price is not going to continue weak. Uh, and we have four minutes to the top of the hour, and uh, we need to see pressure continuing in oil uh, below the low of $38.35. So we need to see it below 35 cents, 38, 35. Uh, and that would see, see the reaction right here. So it's just trying to pop all, uh, off of this uh, 200 SMA. And that's why uh, you're, having a, uh, you're having basically um, this confluence level uh, at the 200 SMA and you're having the support here in SMP. So SMP is energy rich, also financial rich. And uh, right now we're having relative weakness into um, into the Dow here. So let's take a quick look into the Dow. All right. So we're, we're actually trading right now into uh, still, we're still trading into support uh, from uh, the overnight low that we had in uh, last night, not last night, but the night before trading session. So it was right here into the 530 area. And we also have uh, two other lows. So we have uh, actually a quadruple low uh, into the 500 zone. The more we press into the 500, we can start coming in uh, into the 25, 300, 25, 200. Still a lot of pressure on price right now. Uh, slippage. Russell, we need to see it first under 95. And if we see it under 95, we're going to uh, get into the follow through into the 90s. So we want to See the price trade into the 90s. It already rotated on uh, onto the daily, so it had a, uh, it was one of the weakest. Uh, this is a doji, so it triggered the doji low at 1400. But now we need to see it under 95 in order to start pushing lower into. And this is going to be one of our ultimate targets into the 80s. So we're going to go nine. We we want to see it under 95. We want to have a target into the 90s, and we want to have a second target into the 83 to 80 zone. So. And by the way, your CCL is looking still very, very good. Still looking good. I don't see a lot of velocity to the downside. I also don't see a lot of momentum. We have uh, about 20 seconds to the top of the hour. Let's see what these next uh, few candles are gonna, uh, gonna provide us. All right, don't forget guys that this Sunday, we're gonna start a brand new uh, Power Income Futures Trading course. The course is going to start on Sunday uh, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock is the first session. And then it's gonna be Monday through Thursday. It's gonna be from two o'clock to four o'clock Eastern. 
Uh, for those of you that have already registered for prior courses, this is gonna be a retake for you. And uh, uh, you're more than welcome to attend the course. Uh, you're also going to receive uh, the email notification for the course uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow you're going to receive the first notification for the course and then there's gonna be another one that is gonna be sent uh, on the 27th and we start on the 28th on Sunday. Yeah, Oscar, yes, it's the live course. Very excited about that. So when you receive the email, uh, when you guys are gonna receive the email, uh, for those of you that have just registered for the course, when you receive the email on um, tomorrow actually, um, and um, um, yeah, tomorrow Thursday, yeah. So it's set, for, uh, it's set to go out tomorrow uh, at noon. So when you guys receive it, there is going to be a link to the intro part of the course. So please make sure that you review that uh, before the course uh, starts on Sunday. It's only about an hour. And then the full class recordings will be uh, sent out all together on um, July 3rd, so after the class. And the manuals and everything. All right, so we're not getting any kind of velocity uh, to the downside yet. Why I'm still stuck at 25,500, still such a very, very choppy day. Um, and the MNA SMP is stuck into the 60s. NASDAQ is back into the 60s again. It just violated the 60. It looked like it, wants to, it wanted to go a little bit lower, but still has not. Russell will have a hard stop into that 1411.5. We got to be very patient with these patterns. <laughs> uh, CL. Uh, has uh, opened at the top of the hour and has issued a continuation, but it's still anchored into the 200 SMA. We want to see the price within this next 15-minute uh, segment into 11.15. We want to see the price in Russell uh, trading more into the 13.95 than anything else. <clears throat> so we're looking for 1390, 1385, and 1382, 83, and then 1384 uh, for Russell. There is still room for Russell in case it wants to break that 80. There's still room for the 1370. Just a heads up on that. And uh, if we are going to close week um, on the trading session today, we can expect a continuation to the lower bands of support into tomorrow's trading session. Uh, don't forget that thir that 1390 area also represents the 200 SMA on the four hours. So we may see a, a price gyration from that point. Uh, okay, Craig, no worries. Okay, let me just take a quick look. You want to work it out aggressively, or do you want to work it out a little bit of on the conservative side? Okay, so right now it looks like if it trades over 95, you need 95, you can add to the trade, but you put a hard stop at 50. So you can add over 95 and put the stop at 50.
and this is just for Craig. Okay, this is just for Craig. It's not for anyone else. So 95 by 50 on the ad. Market is not having any kind of uh, any kind of momentum on either side of the tape. It's stuck. And Nasdaq is still holding the upper level of support, which is again pretty strong at this point. It has a band of support from fifty all the way to seventy-five. No action in the market. I'm going to take uh, the Dow here onto the 15 minute. So I'm going to repeat it again. I'm going to repeat it. Um, if uh, you're having issues with the login, let everybody receive the same login, the same link for the login and the same password. Uh, but for some reason, the Zoom room has been having some issues this week. And if you uh, have had those issues throughout this week or last week, I don't know if you had any issues last week, but this week, a lot of members had uh, some issues with the link. Uh, please remember to log in a little bit earlier uh, and you let me know by 945 if the link is working for you or not. All right, so Greg, it looks like, you know, you're going to have to live through this until a rotation happens if you want to live through it. If not, you can cut it and reset everything and start it over. All right, we broke the 95 in Russell, which is good. I would like to keep one lot of Russell all the way to a final target. And that final target is going to be uh, into that uh, into that 70, actually, 65 to 70 level. So I'm going to keep one lot active for a swing for a further continuation lower. All right. We were one point away from our target at 90 for about 10 points. So the swing targets are going to be um, into the 1375. Okay, and here is the 90.5. Don't forget to trim into targets each and every single time. Scale out. All right, so the swing target is 1375, 1370, 
and an ultimate target into uh, the 1365 to 13. If you want to keep one lot active as a swing, uh, it looks like the market is under pressure and it looks like the momentum has changed and we're going to uh, start shifting to the downside more, maybe today and tomorrow. So we have uh, strong market breath right now to the downside, very strong market breath to the downside. So if you intend on keeping RTY as a swing, RTY swing, that one lot, no worries, into, um, into these following targets. These are the additional targets there. I've also posted them in our portfolio. Remember to trim in each and every single target. All right, we're approaching right now uh, the 85 target. We're almost two points away from that. And we have the 85, 83. Uh, we're six ticks away from that 85. We're having a target into 83 and 80, actually 82. 83, 82 and tomato, tomato. We're talking about a point. It's the band. All right, so let me just uh, readjust these charts for you. All right, we're seeing some more pressure in oil and uh, oil being under pressure, they're um, creating pressure on the MSMP and the Dow. Bonds are still stuck into the 1720 zone a little daily cluster happening right there. It's not gonna be, it's not an optimum perfect trade, so I'm just gonna leave it alone for that. Don't forget, lock in that 90 for trailing, for not for trailing, but for take half the profit out, uh, take half of the profits out at 90, okay? No changes in the trail so far. When the market is releasing like this, you don't want to apply extra pressure on your trail. Because right now, if you want to trail it, the trail is above the 1400, so don't place it at break even just yet. Price is not confirming the trail stop yet. Price is stabilizing under 90. We have the S&P under 30.50. More pressure to the downside. Uh, NASDAQ is coming in with much more velocity than, uh, uh, than YM here. We need to see Russell under 85 right now. We need to see it under 85 and stay under 85, punch and poke through that 83 support zone. Come on, we need a little bit of pressure right now. 
it's time for the pressure point. We have already released new lows into the S&P and NASDAQ and into YM. We need to release a little bit more in Russell right now. Come on, Russell, you are the weakest. Come on, we have an 86.3. We need to make, break the prior low. 86. Come on again, under 85. We need one more point under 85, and then we can release. We could possibly see, okay, here it is. 85.1. There it is, under 80. Perfect. 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 And uh, at at this 85 to 83, there's going to be a little gyration, but um, I'm also looking for a trail. Oh, a slippage there. You're going to be surprised uh, the, uh, about window dressing. When we had in 2018, when we had uh, the market collapse into uh, for a whole entire quarter, and it was down so much, uh, everybody abandoned ship and ne nobody thought that we we're gonna get a window dressing. And the window dressing came in fact on December 26th. And it, it was the massive rotation that took the price into the height that we are seeing it right now. Uh, the RTY entry uh, was 1400. RTY entry was 1400 and the stop above 1410. Uh, so I placed my stop at 1411.5. Uh, you can see the alert right here. So we need to make sure that we maintain the price below this uh, 14, um, this uh, 1385, 1385. We need to see it over 14. Remember, this is a support zone here. So the likelihood of bouncing off of this, off of this area is high. So I'm monitoring it like a hawk to make sure that we lock in some profits here. I don't want to choke it, but I want to see the price well below 85 right now before I make another decision. So far, very nice price action. We tried a rotation that didn't work out. And in fact, it triggered and uh, it advanced for us, but then it collapsed and would fail. And this is a 15 minute, uh, 15 minute failure, which gives us uh, enough information uh, that the shorts uh, are going to have the upper hand. So that's why we positioned for, um, for Russell Short. Uh, yes, yes, exactly slippage. This is a big support zone right here into the 45, but if we break below 45, uh, we have 40, 30, and we have 30, 20. 30, 20 is the massive support, 30, 20 in S&P. We just need to knock down this support zone in Russell. If we knock down this support in Russell, we are going to have that velocity for the downside into the 1380 and fingers crossed 1370. Like I said, I'm gonna keep one lot for a swing with no management. I just need to punch. I, we just need the price to punch below uh, 1384, way below 1384, so we can lift our stop to 1390. So the trail stop is going to be 1390, contingent on 1384 being hit.
All right. We love it. We love it. Come on. Okay, Tro, stop everybody, 1390. Russell. Thirteen ninety trail stop. If you want to keep it for the sh uh, for the swing portion, you have to keep the uh, keep the stop at break even. So the swing portion is going to have to stop at fourteen hundred. Okay, so the day trading portion of the trade, if you want to see it for lower targets into the thirteen uh, thirteen um, eighty three, uh, thirteen eighty, you have to keep a trail stop at thirteen ninety. Uh, and if you want to keep that one lot that perhaps you have, uh, then your trail stop for the swing, obviously it's going to be higher. It's going to be at break even right now. So either in either case, you are into the money. All right. We are trading lower 13, 13, uh, 1384.4 is the new low. Come on, let's get it out there. We have less than 10 minutes to the close of the London session. We have a print of 82. Remember, as we're getting closer to 80, lock in those 20 points in Russell. That is a substantial gain in Russell today. That's quite a, quite some uh, cash that we're having in Russell. Once again, the trail stop is 1390. If you wanna keep it for the swing portion, your stop is at break even. So again, in either case, you are going to uh, lock some profits. 10 points are locked in already in Russell. That is $500 per contract or $50 per micro. We have one minute into 11.25, into a brand new five minute candle. And then we have another five minutes to the wrap of the 15 minute candle. We wanna make sure that we maintain weakness going into 11.30. We don't wanna see any profit taking into the London session. We are revisiting the low uh, from uh, 6.22 right now. And that is also at the 13.82 level. 1382 to 1383. That's the 1383 right here. All right. We're trading into target zone, but I'm seeing a bit more pressure to the downside here. So I want to see that very clean 1380 before I scale out some more of my position. Uh, NASDAQ is back into support and it's also trading at 10,000 right now. It's very important right now not to get any kind of five minute rotations in Russell. Um, slippage, it is important, but it's not as important. You could trail it even with one. So it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't really matter if you're trading, uh, let's say, because now you have like two contracts. Okay. Uh, do you want to keep it for a swing portion or do you want to, do you want to keep one for a swing portion or are you just uh, keeping it for day trading? 
you're out, oh, you're out already. Okay. No, it's it, basically what you want to do is you want to take out half. So if you're with more than one, you want to take out half at target one always and then leave the rest for trailing. So you take profits at 90 and then once you're hitting, if you have only one lot left, whether it's one contract or a little group of lots that you have, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you trail it uh, the same way you would trail as if you were in with only one contract. So right now I'm eyeing that 87 area because I don't like the 87 area. Perfect, I love that strategy as well. Remember target one and uh, slippage brought up a really great point here. Remember that target one is always the easiest target to achieve. Okay, target one is the easiest target to achieve. Okay, so there are two options here. Remember the trail stop is at 90. There are two options that you can apply here. Number one, if you would like to see, uh, if you would like to stay in the trade for a longer period of time for the next target to be hit, remember that we're gonna observe some rotations and the price is gonna go against us before it's gonna pivot into a high and it's gonna get pushed back lower. So at this time of the day, uh, uh, things may get a little slower and they, uh, they are also may get a little bit more jittery. And we did have quite a, quite a run to the downside. Don't forget, we're almost 50 points to the downside in Russell and we're down 3.34%. Okay, so if we're getting that rotation over 90, remember 90 is the cutoff uh, for the day trade, okay? It's the cutoff for the day trade. And if you want to keep a lot for the swing portion, like I said, your stop is at break even, and we're going to be looking for a continuation back lower into the 1390s. Uh, into uh, below, I'm sorry, below the 1380s uh, going into the 70s. We're seeing a little bit of reaction in NASDAQ. Uh, Craig, uh, I'm looking at it. Uh, so you're getting that five and 15 minute rotations so accelerating a little bit because NASDAQ is at that whole number is at 10,000 and that is also psychological. And don't forget that it, that is the range that uh, the price has been into for quite a few days, four days or so. So that 10,000 is going to react uh, much more uh, aggressively into this area NASDAQ than it will react in any other index. Okay, so then let me just squish the chart so I can show you. Okay, uh, and this was the uh, June 15th, right? And you can see that throughout June 15th, June 15th through actually last Sunday, Okay, uh, we have been trading into this 10,000 and the price was coiling, 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 coiling into this 10,000 uh, 10, area. Okay. So of course it's gonna get some kind of reaction into that, uh, into that spot. Uh, CL is getting back into the 20 SMA, no action on it. I'm gonna keep it on the one hour. The weaker the oil is, the weaker the S&P and the Dow is going to be. We're seeing the price uh, tend to stabilize a little bit into Russell as well. Uh, look for a 15 minute rotation here if you want to counter trade, uh, Craig. Uh, that would be over uh, 30, uh, over 30 with a hard stop, uh, 89. And your target is going to be into 50 and 60, 50, 60, 70 for that, for, for this counter trend right here. Uh, we have a doji, so uh, you can see that NASDAQ is a little bit more aggressive than the Dow and the mini S&P, so we have a doji. We're far extended from the 10 EMAs in all the indices, guys, by the way, in all the indices, all the indices. All right, in about, let me check the time here.
we're going to be trailing a rust a little bit more aggressively. Let's see. So that little pop was the London session close. Let's see if the New York trading session are, is going to apply a bit more pressure to price at this point. Um, okay, so here's the new game plan for Russell. Uh, we're going to have brand new trail stops. Uh, if we start trading below 1383, we're going to lower our stop uh, into 1387. Okay, so that is contingent on this move right now. And we need to see it right now under 83. We need to see some weakness. First off, we need to see a print right now of 1383.4. If we see 1383.4, that is going to assure that we may have a test uh, into that 83, and then we're gonna lower our stop. And we're also going to be setting up a bear sandwich. on the five minute in Russell, right into support. All right, we have it under 83.4. Come on, we need to see the momentum still intact. Ideally, we want to see the S&P punch into the 3040, and we want to see uh, 350 tested into the Dow. Okay, here's the 83. We made a new low on the trading session today in Russell, which is great, which is fantastic, which is fantastic. We hit our second target into the 82 officially. So we had a target into 82. Now we need to see that we're getting a little greedy and we wanna see the 80. Uh, VIX has just achieved target one at 37. So congratulations for those of you that um, took the VIX. You could actually raise the stop to break even. So you had a really nice profit on a day trade. All right, we're, uh, don't forget to scale out massively at 1380. If you wanna keep an extra lot in, you can take all the profits right here. You're uh, up massively on the day. Not only that we went green on the day from the first trade that we had, uh, that we had a stop loss, so, but this puts us in, uh, in, um, in, in the green on the trading session today. So it's your option, you could take it off at 1380 or you can maintain the swing portion of it, if you wanna maintain the swing portion of it. And that will continue for the targets, uh, like I said, into, uh, into the uh, 75 and 70. We're still seeing pressure to the downside, 1340s being tested into the M&E S&P. And like I said, that 350 did the trick and uh, propelled uh, the price a little bit lower right now, which is perfect for us. Good job, Joe. Awesome. Awesome done. And your patience was right on. Good job, Martin. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Now I'm more curious about that swing portion that I'm still going to keep. Like I said, I haven't made any changes. The stop is still at break even for my last lot that I'm still going to have in. Looking for lower targets and that may, you know, take a little bit more time.
I would like to see, uh, okay, so we have about a little bit more than 20 minutes left into the top of the hour. And uh, I would like to see the pressure maintained to the downside in, uh, in Russell. Um, and if we have that, I'm gonna reduce the stop for the uh, swing portion. So again, today was a good day for us. We had one loss and we're coming out of the loss. We calculated our odds and we looked for possibility to make our money back and waited, had the patience to wait for a good pattern to set up. So kudos to all of us here. Joe, it's gonna come quicker than you even think. Okay, so now out New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut orders visitors to quarantine. Let's see if we're going to get a quarantine and rustle into the 70s. Bam! Guys, officially, we are 20 points up in Russell. Congratulations. 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 So the day trading portion of it, you can trail it at 80. Day trading portion, trail, 1380. Congratulations, you're just up 20 points. And Russell. I agree, yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. Come on, let's see if we could get that or 75. So we have that day trading portion locked in at 80. So if it turns around and hits 80, we're out. But we're looking for 75. We're looking for 75. We want to see it into the 75. We love the other breakdown in CL because CL is actually helping us right now very much with, uh, with our trades. Very, very much. No rotations, as you can see right now, no rotations on the 15 minute. This means that we're having down, downside pressure is still intact. Breath is very weak and breath is nearing 85%. Let's see that 75. Let's see that 75. Five more points. Five more points from that 80 is just a gift. That's a little bonus. That's a little bonus for us. Walter, uh, here's your support, 27 to 20. This is gonna be the pressure point. Seventy five point six. We wanna see a clean 75 and I am going to trim a little more into the 1375. We have five ticks into the 75, scale out at 75, 1375 if you have Still some lots left, some contracts left. Wow, okay, awesome. This is just a terrific day right now. Just a terrific day. Just a terrific day. Okay, the media is doing a really great job with these COVID. Uh, announcements. <laughs> okay, have that 13, uh, have that 1380 if you're still keeping, uh, if you're still keeping uh, a lot alive. And even for the swing portion, swing portion also lock it at 1380. Okay, swing portion also leave it at 1380. 
Beautiful, that beautiful 75. Let's see if we see 70. Here's 75 again. If you didn't get out, 75 a portion. This is the time to trail some out. We have a brand new low of 74.6. Beautiful move to the downside. We have a 74. Let's see that 70, 70 still, tons of support. If we break that, if we break that, we're going to see possibly 65. We're going to see 66. 66, 66, 66, 65 is going to be the next target. Yes, Walter, I had a long in NASDAQ and I had a short in Russell. We have 1373.7 as a new low in Russell. Nice acceleration to the downside throughout the board. We're going to be trailing uh, for the rest of you guys that still have a position. Just hold on. Just hold on. We need to trade below 72 and a half. VIX has just reached target two. Congratulations. Today is a massive day for us. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bring your stop to 75, 1375 on all the position. Trail 1375, trail 1375. This is your neutral stop, 1375. 1375. We're into support on everything. We're also nearing, we have, well, not really. Okay, well, one minute, one minute into a solid 15 minute sell bar that may bring, again, more pressure to the downside. So stay tuned, guys, and stay in with me. Beautiful, Vix. Beautiful, Vix. We're getting greedy into the 1370. There you go. We have the 1370, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fantastic day. This is a fantastic day for day traders. Beautiful. All right, it's 1145 and we're having a bearish full red bar candle. We need to see it print under 69.5. Everybody trail 73 right now. Trail 73, 73, 73 on all. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and we're done. And we're done. 1773. Uh, 1373, I'm sorry. Just want to make sure that I have everything here. We made over 1.97%, over almost 2% on this move. Plus, we have the VIX.
All right, so that is $1,350 per contract, $1,350 per contract. Yes, our fantastic levels, yes. Our levels to the rescue. Literally, you don't really need to be like all that smart when it comes to trading if you have really good levels to work with. Okay. Um, NASDAQ is very interesting. It's on the one hour 200 SMA and it's on to the daily 10 EMA. So this would be, uh, this is, this is going to bring a reaction. Okay, Craig. Okay. Thanks, job. Uh, th thanks. <laughs> uh, thanks, Brad. Okay. Um, Craig, this is just for Craig. This is just for Craig. This is just for Craig. 9986, Craig. 9986 rotation. 9986. I don't know if this is going to help, but you need to wait for that. And then All right. Okay, anybody else keeping the swing portion? Anybody else keeping the swing portion? Just, just wanted to make sure that um, I provide you with all the information. Okay. Okay, so nobody's in, everybody's out. Everybody's out. Okay, good. Okay, and oil is getting back into support. Oil is getting back into support. All right, we're trying to balance it out right now. Do you see that gold is just so wishy-washy? So it's not really, it's not really seen as that safe haven just yet. Bonds from 22 to 25, uh, they're getting closer to a daily rotation. Just gonna put the bonds here. Uh, so we can take a look. So this is going to be a rotation point right here into the bond. So this can be a daily. I'm not going to do it. I really don't want to do anything aggressive from the swing side um, this week, especially into bonds and especially with this window dressing. I don't know uh, what's going to happen, uh, but I'm just going to give you a heads up. If the bonds are going to trade over 177.30, they can possibly run a little bit higher uh, into the 13. Like I said, for me, it's not a, it's not a great risk to reward ratio. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the hour into NASDAQ and into the, because NASDAQ has the best, um, here it is, the best chance of popping 
because it's sitting on the 200 SMA algorithm zone. It's also trading uh, onto the daily 10 EMA right here. So this is going to be, like I said, about five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. This, if, if we're going to get a bounce, this is the bounce. Okay, this is the bounce. So Craig, if you're looking for something aggressive, uh, you can initiate a, a 99.68. Uh, with a hard stop uh, 27, hard stop 27. And this is gonna be a hard stop, okay? Okay, I, I wouldn't do this then. Wait until, wait until tomorrow. D don't, don't force it today, don't force it. This would have been, this would have been a balancing out from an initial position if you would have had it, but no, ju just let it go, just let it go. Tomorrow is literally a different, um tomorrow's another day okay uh <sighs> i don't know what to say here i'm very conflicted because i like nasdaq but we had such a good trade today. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to let it go for now. But this would be a spot where we would look for a reversal and a very, very, very aggressive long. I don't know if, because remember, the support level is going to be um, the last shelf, the last safety net before another drop. Uh, slippage. You traded Russell NASDAQ. CL, GC, RCL, CCL, Boeing, Facebook, IQ, PNN, SPG, VIX. <laughs> I could not resist the short side. I'm all out for now. <laughs> this is a great day for you, Slippage. Congratulations. It's, you've done an amazing, amazing job. Amazing job. Uh, Walter, I do love technical analysis. I have to tell you that I do love technical analysis. It's 100%. We're basing our decisions 100% on technical analysis. Well, maybe 99.9% .9 because we are uh, tuning to the outside world to see what, uh, what is going on. But definitely, this is a wrap on the day. Uh, I do not have any other uh, trades that I, I believe everybody's out. You know, we're going to uh, tomorrow we're going to have brand new levels. We're going to see what tomorrow brings. And uh, this is a wrap for today. So I hope you had a good day. Uh, a lot of traders in here had a very good day. Uh, we And again, remember to respect the parameters on your trades. Okay, respect the parameters on your trades. Uh, it is very important. Now, uh, we're entering, we have already entered the doldrum period at 1130. And this is going to have a duration of about two to three hours uh, until the market calibrates a little bit. Uh, if you want to trade the afternoon trading session, try to hover into higher time frames because those are going to give you, those are going to provide you with uh, a much better technical image. And take a look at our technical levels right here. Look at the support that we have into the 13, uh, 1321. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. In, yeah, into the 1321. It went to 31 right here and it's starting to rotate. So uh, we're possibly going to see some bounces and the, bounce, the bounces are going to be dictated by NASDAQ that has just approached that uh, 200 SMA uh, onto the one hour uh, and uh, also the 10 MA onto the daily. Guys, this is a wrap for today. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you had a good day. And um, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. I'm just going to keep the room open for another two minutes. And uh, other than that, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.
Uh, hey, JJ, uh, you have a question about NASDAQ. If NASDAQ was to pop from this level, yes, 10,000 would be uh, actually one of the first targets for it. So it can potentially have a pop of about 50 points right here, JJ. Sorry, I missed that question. Uh, just let me know, guys, if you still have any questions. I'm still going to be here for uh, two more minutes. 